Good evening, all you model, model mania friends out there. This is Dan Leone, and this is Plastic Model Building 101. Building the Tamiya 148 scale Mark 5B Spitfire. In my previous episodes, I have demonstrated the painting as far as part prep, uh, spraying the uh, primer on the model. And as you can see, Everything is all nice, and and uh, we looked all around and uh, didn't see any uh, surface flaws around. Uh, I did take the liberty of sanding a little, little here and there, and applied a little bit of putty along the uh, wing roots. And uh, but I gotta tell you, with a Tamiya model, you just can't go wrong with it. So done all that. And we uh, just waited 20, about uh, 20, 24 hours to uh, the, wait the, for the paint to dry. And everything looks good. Now, some people, if you really want to get into the show and all the, the nooks and the crannies and all that, everybody likes to pre-shade their model. And, and if you want to do that, that's fine. And the way you do that, I'll give you a little crash course on that. Um... A lot of people, what they use is a uh, flat black model, mo model master acrylic, dilute it with water and, and apply it to your airbrush and, and, and do a thin, a thin line. And you want to go through all the, all the, uh, all the nooks and crannies, especially around the control surfaces, around where all the panel lines are and the cowlings and things like that. But personally, I, I really don't do it because, well, it's not that I'm, I'm lazy or anything, but it's just more work. This is a hobby to enjoy, not something just that's going to create more work for yourself. I've seen a lot of people who build models and they just get burned out on them and they just throw them up on the shelves and, and whatnot. So, anyway, but we are going to... Continue on. We're gonna press on and and uh, spraying our model. Okay, we uh, we're gonna start painting the underside of the model. In most Spitfires, in the early part of the war, they were painted. Uh, most most of them, most of them were painted a British guy type. Uh, and of course, one wing was painted black for identification purposes, and then later on. They were painted a British sea gray, medium sea gray. This was about to about uh, around August of forty one. Until uh, until toward the end of the war, they started painting this in this uh, scheme. So the bottom the bottom part of it was painted a uh, British sea gray medium, and uh, I have uh, some other paints here. Um, you have a. Uh, the British Sea Gray, which is uh, this one right here. Um, if you're going to do uh, a desert version, uh, Azor Blue by uh, Polyscale. And this too is Polyscale. I recommend as far as paints, uh, to me, acrylics, they're good. And I like to do acrylics because, number one, they're easy to clean up. And number two... They're easy. They're very easy to work with. They're water based, unlike enamels where you have to have thinners and everything, and it's just, you know, it's just a mess to clean up. So, anyway, so um, we're also going to have uh, a British slate gray for the top side, and also um, we also have some several other and uh, dark earth. Okay, so let's get to painting. I have here a little funnel with a screen. You can get these through Micromark. Very inexpensive, and I guarantee you these are these are worth it. Shake up our bottle, and we open up our paint. And what I like to do is I like to, we need to dilute 
we need to dilute our paint. Um, I usually pour like put it in like like two about two drops of distilled water. So I have the distilled water in this cup. That's all we need right here. And then we'll just put this in the paint. I put it, I put in three just to, you know, for luck. And then after that, we cap our bottle. When we shake it, mix the water in. Now, you want to be very careful because you do not want your paints to be too thin. Because what happens if you thin your paint out too much, your paint will come out very, very translucent. You know, you don't want that. And you don't want it too thick either because you don't want it to clog up your airbrush. Alright. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to turn on my I'm going to turn on my, my airbrush, get my compressor going, and uh, I put the uh, paint to about 15 to 20 psi. Um, you might want to have your compressor running for a little bit so that way it can uh, get all the moisture and everything out of the lines. Uh, I would also recommend having a moisture trap on your compressor as well too. So we'll go ahead and okay that's going on. We get our paint. We'll pour it through the strainer because you don't want a whole bunch of globs or anything. As you can see, it's filtering the paint. Okay. Okay, and as you can see, this is what the globs and everything that you don't want, because that can clog up your airbrush. And when you clog up, when it clogs up your airbrush, if you get moisture trapped in your lines, your paint will start splattering. And not only that, but if you also get a clogged up airbrush, the paint starts splattering as well. That can then we turn on our, our paint booth. Get all the dust and everything. Okay. I have here an Aztec uh, Aztec paint tip. Uh, I like to uh, I like to use these because I you know like I said on the Aztec uh, airbrush very easy to clean up take these take these out clean them and not only that but you don't have to worry about uh, taking these apart. Put these on. Wrench. So Kind of doing some fine tuning here. Okay, 
Then we get our okay, word up at my there's my paint cup. Put it on here. And then we get our little our little eyedropper here. Okay. Now what I like to do, I want to I want to test my airbrush, make sure I got the, the correct at the correct uh, pressure and everything. I have here a, a paper plate, and what I just do, I just Sometimes you just gotta work your airbrush. As you can see, this is what you want. Okay. As I say, you want to have a correct, you want to have a, you want to have a, an accurate distance from the model. So here we go. Like I said, I just do it one, one stroke. One light coat. Sometimes I laid on I laid on the I hope y'all can see this. Sometimes you gotta check your check your airbrush. As you can see, I got some paint splatters right here. That means it might be some moisture trapped in the lines. So sometimes you have to work. See, I got, I'm getting some moisture trapped in this line, so you always want to uh, work your airbrush back and forth. Okay. Well, that basically covers the uh, basic painting. Uh, in the next episode, we'll do the I'll do the top part. I will wait for the bottom to, to dry. And then uh, we will uh, do the masking. So this is Dan Leone signing off, Pice Model Building 101. Have a good night.